Welcome everyone. This is our algebra two transmission functions lesson number four horizontal stretching compression homework review part one. In this one, we're going to be talking about horizontal uh, uh, stretching or dilations in this case, right? And if you find this video helpful, please make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. We're like 19 away from our target goal of 200 before we do our uh, before we do our uh, our uh, giveaway. So. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and share with other people. So question number one, the quadratic function g of x has a turning point at negative 12 comma 8. Where would the quadratic function f of x equals g of 4x have a turning point? Okay, so this time around uh, versus the last videos we did with the vertical stretching, here we have where we're multiplying not the function on the outside, but the x value on the inside. And this is going to be a horizontal compression slash uh, stretch in this case. And so well, which one is it? Well, we use the following rule. We want to transform y equals f of x to y equals f of b, b times x. We say we have a horizontal compression when b is greater than 1. And a horizontal stretch when b is between 0 and 1. To graph the new point, we multiply x by 1 over b, or the reciprocal of b, and keep the y value the same. So we have x, y becoming 1 over b, comma, y. So unlike before, when we did the vertical stretching or compressions, we would just, in this case, multiply the y value by the number we're multiplying. In this, so, but now, but now, uh, the key thing is that for a, a horizontal uh, dilation, if the value of b is greater than 1, it's actual compression. And to get the transformed value, whether it's compression or stretch, we're going to take our b value, take its reciprocal, or do one, one divide by that b value, and multiply the x value. Okay? And keep y value the same. So, for question number one, we see here, we're going to apply the following. Our b value is 4. So b equals 4. That means we're going to multiply the x value by 1 over 4. So we're using the formula x comma y transforms to 1 over 4 x comma y. And so if we have negative 12 comma 8, g of x with that same coordinate be 1 fourth times negative 12 comma 8, which will be in this case 1 fourth of negative 12 is going to be Neg 3 and the y value is the same. So neg 3 comma 8 is choice 3. Oops. Question number 2. The three x social graphs shown below represent the function f of x equals b of the x, g of x equals b of the 2x, and h of x equals b or b of the x over 2 for some value of b greater than 1. Label each with its correct equation. So we see here that b x by itself should be the one in the middle, right? Because in this case, the number multiplying x for the first one, f of x, is going to be just 1, while the number multiplying the x value for g of x is 2, and number multiplying uh, the h of x would be the one half x is one half. So what happens is in black we're going to have f of x. That's the one in the middle. Okay. Now when the b when the number in this case of the 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 horizontal dilation, if the number we're multiplying by x is greater than one, it means we're going to have a horizontal compression. So in this case, the one that will be closer to the y-axis, okay, the closer to the y-axis will be, in this case, g of x. So we'll have g of x in green. Okay, because a horizontal compression means it'll be, in this case, that the graph is going to be squished towards closer to the y-axis. And when the number multiplying x in this case is going to be uh, between 0 and 1. We have a horizontal stretch. And the horizontal, horizontal stretch in this case would be by 
by a factor of two, because you know in this case, one over one half, or the reciprocal one half is two. So it's a horizontal stretch of factor of two, which really means in this case that the red graph is h of x will be basically twice the distance away from the y-axis than f of x. Although I didn't really draw them into scale, so I apologize for that, but this is the order it should be in for number two. Now, algebraic show that the y-intercept of each function is the same. Well, let's take f of x here. So f of zero is b to the zero power. And any number to the zero power except for zero, except for zero but the base has to be greater than what we said, is going to be equal to one. So f of zero equals one. We apply the same to g of x. So g of zero would be b to the two times zero. Well, that's the same as b to the zero, which means g of zero is also equal to one. And finally, h of zero equals b to the one half times zero which is still b to the zero power, because one half times zero is zero. So h of zero is equal to one. And so they all have a y value of one when x equals zero. That means the point they all meet at here will have to be zero comma one. They all have the y intercept of one, okay? All right. Question three. The graph of f of x is shown in the grid below. Sketch the graph of f2x on the same axis. So f2x means that we're going to multiply each of the x values by one half. So we see here, so because it's 2x, xy becomes one half x comma y. So we'll look at each of the coordinates here, all right? And so negative eight comma seven becomes negative four comma seven. And so that would be negative four comma seven would be, oops, not there. Instead, right there. Okay? And then we would have neg 4 comma neg 3 that will become neg 2 comma neg 3 again we're multiplying x value by one half keeping the y value the same our next coordinates could be 0 comma 2 which ends up becoming one half times 0 is just 0 comma 2 okay 2 comma 0 becomes one half of two is one, so one comma zero. Sorry, I should be using my pen here. Probably better. <laughs> Oops. Okay. I'm actually going to erase these two and then redraw them because it's a little bit messy here. That's a lot better. One comma zero right here. Right, and finally we have six comma six. One half of six is gonna be, well, three, so three comma six. And so we would have three comma six would be right around here. Oops, that's three comma seven, too high. Three comma six, right here. And we basically have the same height as all the other points, but instead, we have here, we're going to see in this case, and I use a dot line here, we'll see that the that the x values are just half as they used to be. So definitely f of 2x is going to be a horizontal compression by a factor of 2. Okay? Or now the distance from the x, uh, from the y-axis would be half as much as originally. Now what's our domain? Well, it looks like the least most value here, our least most value for x, will be, it looks like, negative 4. So domain of x, definitely negative 4. 
And the, the rightmost point, maybe I shouldn't use arrows. I should just use, yeah, maybe solid. Oh, let's see. Okay. Our rightmost point would be at, at x equals 3. So our domain would be from between negative 4 and 3 inclusive. Now for our range. So our, it should be, oh, domain of, I'm sorry. I'm looking at two different things. I was looking, this should be the domain of, the domain of f of 2x. This should be. So that's what I found here. Okay, maybe I should just drag, drag all this here. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I was putting this in the wrong, they read the wrong thing. This is the domain of 2x. Our domain of f of x was going to be, the domain of f of x would be negative 8 is less than equal to x is less than equal to 6. And honestly, what we could have done is, it, once I found that, I could have just divided all the endpoints by 2, and get the same thing, but I read them from from our from a graph here. Okay, everybody. All right, everyone. This is going to be the end of our algebra two transmission functions lesson number four horizontal stretching and compression homework review part one. If you found this helpful, please give this video a like and leave any questions or comments in the comments section below. All right, we'd love to hear from you. And if you have you if you know if anyone's having trouble with these things, you might want to share the video with with them and you know encourage them to subscribe because we're only about in this case 19 away from being able to give a giveaway on my 200 subscription we're going to be giving away a uh, mind friends brown funko pop so look it up and see what it looks like and all i have an extra one and we're going to give away to your subscribers and of course you know i'll let you know the rules when we hit there okay everyone thanks so much for watching and definitely keep track of what we're looking for I'll look forward to our next video of the whole review part two we go into question number four and so on all right, thanks for watching. All right, take care, bye. Be safe.